I have the Z Flip 6 on hand. I have gone through everything to find the features that no one wants you to know. Well, they might do. You get my point. Let's go. Z Flip 6 is finally in my possession. After I quickly tore it open, and as a YouTuber, you always have to film your unboxings. Luckily, there's not much to them these days, so it takes literally like a minute. I got the phone in hand and started going through everything that I could find that hasn't really been mentioned yet. So we're going to break it down into the categories that I normally do, hardware, camera, software, and take a look at what hasn't really been discussed and what no one is talking about. Starting with the hardware, there are some obvious things that, that they want you to know and people have been talking about. Things like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, the massive 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and the vapor chamber. Everyone's been making a big deal how Samsung have fit a vapor chamber inside this tiny little space. Which, when you consider that it's also a bigger vapor chamber than the S23 Ultra, that's a good job. Good job, Samsung. But there's two things that not a lot of people are really giving a lot of credit to Samsung for doing. The first is there is now 12 gigabytes of RAM as a base for the Z Flip 6. Now, in terms of real-world usage and performance, I haven't really had a chance to put that to the test, but I will. You absolutely know I will be doing that, especially as I like to use a phone for a couple months that will be in my long-term review down the line. But as a base, 12 gigabyte of RAM is good. You can see it there in device care. What a good decision by Samsung to do that. Second thing that not a lot of people are really giving credit for is the crease. I have seen some people highlight it, but the crease is so much less noticeable on the Flip 6 than what it has been before. You can see in these close-ups here, it's, it's next to non-existent compared to the deeper groove that you had on the Flip 5 from last year. The crease on a flip phone is definitely more important than a crease on a fold because the flip, you are scrolling your finger over that middle section all the time. Even if it's just to swipe up ex exaggeratedly, that's, that's not a word, you will go over that crease and feel it. Samsung have reduced how the intensity of it and it's not going to be as big an issue when you are using the phone in the normal smartphone mode that you're meant to use it in. But all of that pales in comparison to what comes with the camera. Samsung always sneak in features into the cameras of their phones that they don't really talk about on stage. I don't know why, but I've found them. So let's go through them. Starting with the obvious one is of course has 50 megapixel. And we know that that capability is going to be really strong, but you might not have known that you can use 50 megapixel from the cover screen. So you can just change to the 50 megapixel resolution straight from the cover display and take high resolution selfies without even opening up your phone. Super convenient and takes some really nice quality shots. The other thing that 50 megapixel thing does is it does this thing called auto zoom and it is so clever. When you launch the camera from the cover screen and then pop it into like a semi flex mode, kind of like this, it will activate this thing called auto zoom from the cameras that are on the front here slash the back. What this does is depending on who's in frame, it will zoom in and out of the photo and sort of line it up for you to capture the best possible framing of what you're looking at. Now with 50 megapixel, it means that when it does go into that extra length of zoom, it can actually take a, quite a decent shot because it's cropping in from a high resolution to start with. It can also go all the way back to ultra wide. When you can see with my son here, I can go in and out and it can take some nice photos of us sort of standing next to each other, perfectly framed, which I really like. The other thing that no one's really talking about either is the new ultra wide camera. You'll see it in the software, it's 0.6 times versus 0.5 from the Flip 5, meaning that the field of view is slightly narrowed a little bit, but probably going to help with distortion and means Samsung will put in a new sensor and a new lens in front of it, which is good. It means the quality is going to improve. Now there's some things that have been brought over from the Galaxy S24 that I would have liked Samsung to highlight because they're very impressive features. Things like dual recording, the ability to set the camera record from two cameras at once. And with the flip, that is going to be so handy because you can pop the phone into its flex mode, put it on a table or somewhere flat, and you can have it record two camera angles at the same time. I think that's going to be genius. And I can't wait to try that on the fold when that eventually comes in as well. Portrait video mode now has the ability to zoom. So you can go from 1x to 3x whilst recording portrait video. And again, that's all down to the new 50 megapixel on the main camera, allowing for that higher quality crop from the main sensor. This is portrait video mode in action on the Z Flip 6. It's pretty cool that I can put this down and I have my tripod that I can do this. 
I also can put it into its camcorder mode, meaning I can sort of, again, get the widescreen portrait video, and I still have the tripod of my flip there. You can see the camera's recording the flip as I'm sitting here with my wardrobe that doesn't have doors. Samsung have also put in 2x portrait photos. So with the Flip 5, you, you couldn't do that. Flip 6, you now have two 1x and 2x options for portrait photos. And you can also do this from the cover screen. So when you're taking cover screen portrait selfies, you can go into 2x as well. And that works really neatly too. Okay, so I've come outside because I wanted to show a feature called auto framing. Auto framing been around forever, but Samsung on the Flip 6 actually made it way more usable. Now with auto framing, not only can you shoot in 4K 30, but you can also use the multiple cameras on the phone to start from. And what I really like with auto framing and the Flip 6 is the ability to pop the phone into flex mode, turn on the cover screen preview, and while you're doing your tricks for football, whatever it is, you have auto framing that you can sort of see how you're sitting in the frame that you're recording. Really clever. And having it be 4K means the footage later can be cropped into and you're still maintaining a higher resolution. Now there's something with the flip that I forgot to show that is super cool. We know that the flip can sort of obviously go into flex mode, but Samsung have built software so it takes advantage of camcorder mode. Let me show you what I mean. You obviously go into normal camera mode. Swipe across the video and then put the phone sideways and bend it. Now nothing happens straight away, but you'll see in the top corner, there's a little standby, which is, I think it's really neat. And then if you hit record, the whole interface changes. So I can sort of use my thumb to sort of go in and out of zoom, kind of like the old camcorders used to do, which I think is so cool and neat. And you get the little recording icon on the top and then you hit stop when you're ready to stop. So things I found really odd was that there's no AK. I don't know whether that's just because of the fact that it's a flip and there's less space and they're still conscious of overheating even with that vapor chamber, or if they just don't think flip customers want or need it. Either way, there is no AK video recording. Thought I'd highlight that. With camera assistant, Samsung will put in an extra setting to take advantage of the 50 megapixel main camera. You now can have high resolution upscaled zoom. So when you are in 50 megapixel mode and you zoom in, it will upscale it to 50 megapixel using AI or something along those lines. Whatever. Pretty cool. Neat little trick. And the last one, which is a pretty big one, which only a few places have sort of mentioned, is that Expert RAW is now on the Flip 6. Because of that new 50 megapixel camera, Samsung will put Expert RAW here so you could take advantage of all the extra settings and extra functions that Expert RAW can give you. Things like taking photos in 24 megapixel resolution or an ND filter, that is all on here. And because of the fact this can have flex mode and act like a tripod, it actually means the ND filter will become really handy on something like this. Now let's crack into the software because there's actually quite a bit in the software that we haven't really seen a lot of people fuss over. So I'm gonna fuss over it because that's my job and I like doing it. The first is to do with the cover screen. There's no real change in terms of dimensions or look or feel or even resolution. What Samsung have done is just tune the software and refine it ever so slightly. The first such tuning comes from the widget situation. Before it's just like a literal single widget on each card and you scroll through them. Now Samsung have created the opportunity to put multiple widgets on a widget card from the cover screen and you can customize it. So you can remove stuff you don't want to use and add stuff in that you do. What I really like is I put the gallery and put an album on one of the widgets and when you click on it on the cover screen, it takes you straight to that album and you can start swiping through it. It's pretty clever. The other widget situation is kind of really cool as well. I love using it sort of as a timer or a stopwatch. It's basically like a watch that's on the front of a phone. It's, it's kind of nice. It seems like we'll put in some new backgrounds for the cover screen. The main one being one that you can sort of fidget with. It's like these dog faces that you can sort of move around. And as you move the phone, they sort of move with it. It's kind of cute, kind of clever. That's on there. What sort of ties in with that is Samsung kind of, kind of put in lock screen always on display, kind of like the S24, but not really. The S24, the way Samsung did it is you can have the lock screen be your always on display screen as well. And there's even functions in there to remove the background of the lock screen. So it's just the picture and the foreground. When you have tap to show on always on display turned on, you can kind of achieve the same thing. It will have a setting that will appear called leave the lock screen on for five seconds on always on display. It's dim, 
So when you like either lock the screen or if you tap to show always on display, it's your lock screen, stays on for five seconds and then goes away. All the other always on display functions are there as per Flip 5, but this is a new one that isn't on there. Samsung have got a really tiny update to flex mode panel and it's not a big one at all. It's just, you can now move the flex mode panel around on the screen and position it where you want to if the corner was too distracting, that, that's it. Now there's new Galaxy AI. A lot of it we've gone through, but there's a couple that we haven't. Main one being that inside Smart Select, which is now has a new home, you can actually use sketch to image straight from there. And if you sort of crop something in from a website or from a article or whatever it is you're looking at, you can go straight to sketch to image and add something in into that photo. Works exactly the same way as sketch to image does inside the gallery. So Samsung have just made it the same and brought that in as well. There's also one that not a lot of people really talked about either is that the new compose feature inside chat assist. So chat assist was in Samsung keyboard where you can basically re rewrite something that you have wrote down, where you can translate something and or use spelling and grammar. With composer, you basically give it a prompt and then it writes it out for you based on the style and the type of message that you're looking for. Really good. I tried it a couple of times. I tried it once to ask my wife out on a date and then it said that that was inappropriate, a little weird. And then I asked it to ask for annual leave for a job that I don't have. And it typed me out a full email in the style that I wanted for, which was really impressive. There's some new options in the phone's dialer app. They allow you to do some really basic stuff. It's nothing too crazy. You've always been able to answer the phone by unflipping and hang up by closing it. There's a couple other things though that Samsung have stuck in there. And there's one more thing that I actually found out is on the Flip 5 as well, but has been discovered recently with the Flip 6. That's DeX. No, not full DeX, unfortunately. It is new DeX and it's in its experimental stage. It's not even fully fledged. How this works is basically the same way DeX does work. You plug it in via USB-C to an external display and it launches. There's no wireless version of it. You actually have to go into developer options on your phone, which you go into by about phone, hitting the build number like five or six times or every times it tells you to, and it opens it up. You go into developer options, scroll all the way down to the bottom and turn on experimental desktop mode, I think it's called, or something along those lines. And you have to reboot the phone once you turn it on. And then when you do, simply do as Dex does, plug it in, and then it launches on the external display. Only thing is, is that it's basically the new version of DeX that Samsung launched on One UI 6 on the Tab S9. And, it's, and it sucks. It's terrible. And I think that's why it's experimental because it's not very good. It's full screen and it sort of launches an app drawer like in a DeX style, I guess you could say, but nothing is fledged out. Like if you press the recents key, it opens the recents key on the phone screen, not the DeX screen. It's not DeX. If you want to minimize an app, you'll press on the line and it'll open up the minimize option on the far left of it, not even close to where your mouse is. Normal DeX works as normal DeX does. This is not that. So I implore Samsung to just push a software update and put proper DeX on the flip. I know that it's probably still not enough space and the cooling solution even though it's good, might not be enough, but there's more than enough hardware here. And even if you put wireless decks on here, just for people when they're traveling to tap into wireless Samsung TVs and hotels or monitors like what I've got behind me, that will be enough. It's more than capable. So that's my pledge to you is that I want to make this happen. That's it for this week. Hopefully you like the Flip 6. Let me know if there's any Flip 6 stuff that you want to see from me in the future with this phone try and make a stack of content for you hit subscribe to take with benefits and i'll see you in the next one you